How's it going, folks? Hey, I'm going to put this one off for a little while. This is a little much for me right now. I do like a nice bourbon sour mash, but mm, this is Nectar of the God. There we are. From the Highlands of Scotland. <sighs> Here is mud in your eye. Or maybe something better than that. Ooh. Chapter 21 of Mosiah. And came to pass that Limhi and his people returned to the city of Nephi after dropping off their Lamanite king <laughs> and passing the buck and began to dwell in the land again in peace. Damn, I'm already feeling this. Maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> Ouch. Didn't sleep too good with this. Lacerations started throbbing. It's throbbing now. Let's see if I can put it to sleep. Ow. And it came to pass that after many days the Lamanites began again to be stirred up in anger against the Nephites. And they began to come into the borders of the land round about. Now they durst not slay them, because of the oath which their king had made unto Limhi, but they would smite them on the cheeks. Probably because they offered the other one. It's like, hey, did you like slapping that cheek? Try this one out. Someone told us we had to do that shit. <laughs> Smite them on their cheeks and exercise authority over them, and began to put heavy burdens upon the backs, their backs, and drive them as if they would be a dumbass. I can't get used to that. Are we uh, referring to Balaam having an argument with his articulate donkey? That's why all the other ones that don't talk are dumbasses? <laughs> why are you telling us that the donkey can't talk? I would have got that on my own. <sighs> Dumbass. That's where I left off. <laughs> Yay! All this was done that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled. Well, the Lord, the, word of the Lord, sounds like it sucks ass. It means that your life has got to suck and be horrible. And I'm still testing you. He doesn't need to test you if he made you. He knows everything. If he's real and he's testing, he's just being a sadist, that's all. Because he knows everything. <sighs> and now the afflictions of the Nephites were great. And there was no way that they could deliver themselves out of their hands from the Lamanites. Wait, for the Lamanites had surrounded them on every side. Dumbasses? <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, that's uh, verse 3 of chapter 21 of Mosiah. I, and I believe they said dumbass two, uh, twice two chapters ago. Just something nice when the missionaries come and ask him, Hey, you know, what's this dumbass shit? 
Just wondering. What's all this shit about being a dumbass? Dumbass? Ugh. Mm. And it came to pass that the people began to murmur with the king because of their afflictions. And they began to be desirous to go up against them to battle. Yeah, we could use some good battles in this book. And they did afflict the king sorely with their complaints. They can do that, huh? A pretty wimpy king. Sounds like a punk. Therefore, he granted unto them that they should do according to their desires. He is a punk. Good thing he's not elected. Oh, he was. <laughs> and they gathered themselves together again and put on their armor and went forth against the Lamanites to drive them out of their land. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did beat them and drove them back and slew many of them. And now there was a great mourning and lamentation among the people of Limhi, the widow mourning for her husband, the son and daughter mourning for their father, and the brothers for their brethren. What's the other brother, like 4F? God, did they need to do all that on gold? Must have weighed a ton. Very heavily worded. Now, there was a great many widows in the land, I gather. And they did cry mightily from day to day, like you said in verse 9. And a great fear of the Lamanites had come upon them. Fuck it. <laughs> And it came to pass that their continual cries did stir up the remainder of the people of Limhi to anger against the Lamanites. And they went again to battle, and they were driven back again, suffering much loss. More widows, more lamenting. Yay! Doesn't sound appropriate. Oh, wait. <laughs> Just kidding. There's a comma, not an exclamation point. That Fucking around. Yay, they went again the third time and suffered the like manner. And those that were not slain returned again to the city of Nephi. And they did humble themselves even to the dust, subjecting themselves to the yoke of bondage submitting themselves to be smitten and to be driven to and fro and burdened according to the desires of their enemies. <laughs> and they did humble themselves even in the depths of humility. Another oxymormon. <laughs> And they did cry mightily to God. Yea, even all the day long. Then how did they do all their work with the taskmasters beating their asses and smiting their cheeks and shit? Oh, I guess they worked and prayed at the same time. I guess you could do that. I used to pray all the time, honestly. I swear to God. <sighs> Oops, lost my place. Uh, 
Oh, and they did humble themselves in the depths of humility, and they did cry mightily to God. Yea, even all the day long did they cry unto their God that he would deliver them out of their afflictions. And now the Lord was slow to hear their cry because of their iniquities. What about the prodigal son? I mean, different. <sighs> Nevertheless, the Lord did hear their cries and began to soften the hearts of the Lamanites. Don't want to send some more of their daughters out there? <sighs> that they began to ease their burdens. Yet the Lord did not see fit to deliver them out of bondage. And <sighs> and it came to pass that they began to prosper by degrees with so many people dead, with such heavy casualties that were, by the way, not numbered. <sighs> and began to raise grain more abundantly, somehow, and flocks and herds that they did not suffer with hunger. All right, they had to change their way of doing things somehow, I guess, but they don't tell you how. I don't know, maybe were there, like, pixies uh, harvesting their crop at night? <laughs> Leprechauns? I don't know. I wish they had told us. I want to know what I'm supposed to be believing in. They're doing a lame job. Now, there was a great number of women, more than there were was of men, Therefore, King Limhi commanded that every man should impart to support of the widows and their children, decent, that they might not perish with hunger. And this they did because of the greatness of their number that had been slain. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Now, the people of Limhi kept together in a body as much as it was possible and secured their grain and their flocks. So they were lousy at doing management before. Or someone was shiftless. You know, someone got his ass killed, right? <laughs> and the king himself did not trust his person without the walls of the city unless he took his guards with him. You mean like he wouldn't have done that all along? And why is he going outside the city anyway? He's got people to report to him. Uh, uh, unless he took his guards with him, fearing that he might by some means fall into the hands of the Lamanites and stay in the fucking castle. You're the fucking king. <laughs> what a dumbass for a king. He's so noble. It's like one of those 1970s TV shows where the good guy has to be like so good it makes you sick. He can't kill a guy. Uh-uh. So he has to tie people up and they, and they get away and they keep chasing him. Yeah, anyway, I could go into examples, but I won't. Uh, for another video, maybe. Uh, and he caused that his people should watch the land round about. Uh, that they weren't doing that before? <laughs> uh, that by some means they might take those priests that fled into the wilderness. You mean he waited that long? Didn't put that order out earlier when he... 
come on, think about that. That doesn't make any sense. Why is he doing it now? I mean, this isn't like, you know, whatever. <sighs> Move on. All right. Uh, the priests that fled into the wilderness, who had stolen the daughters of the Lamanites, and that had caused such a great destruction to come upon them. For they were desirous to take them that they might punish them. For they had come into the land of Nephi by night and carried off their grain and many of their precious things. Therefore they laid wait for them, but they didn't get their wives back and kids. I mean, if they can steal grain, why can't they go to their house and go, Honey, honey, just get your shit. Let's go. I mean, it worked for Lehi and the gang, Nephi and all them. I mean, they left with all their fucking, without their gold and ended up having to go back and get it. Because <laughs> they found out they actually had a lot more time than they thought they did. <laughs> all right. Uh for they were desirous to take them and punish them that they might, uh, for they had, oh uh, wait. So they laid, therefore they laid wait for them because of all the shit, the priests of uh, King Noah. And And it came to pass that there was no more disturbance between the Lamanites and the people of Limhi. Oh, we have an asterisk. About, and I'm quoting directly, about B.C. 122. About. <laughs> Their words. Even, yeah, they had no more problems with the Lamanites. Um, even until the time that Ammon, which is where we left off, and his brethren came into the land. All right, are we on a different bunch of gold plates suddenly and nobody told me? Because we were reading somebody else's gold plates and he bothered to write this down at the... All right, hang on, we're not done yet, we're not done yet. All right, Ammon, read this. <laughs> it only took a few days. We needed to write the part where you walk in on on set, on the, on the stage. I mean, come on, think about this. Isn't this totally convincing? That's all I wanted to say. Oh. Even until the time that Ammon and his brothers had come into the land. All right, I'm repeating myself. Here we go. And the king, Limhi, Having I, my parentheses, uh, the king, having been without the gates of the city with his guard, discovered Ammon and his brethren somewhere like I don't know around ten, chapter ten of this book or twelve in that area. <clears throat> I'm not keeping track. This isn't a scholarly work. It's being videoed. I'll look at it later if I want to, <laughs> and I probably won't want to. <sighs> <laughs> so the king just happened to be outside the city gates <laughs> uh, and discovered Ammon and his brother and supposing them to be the priests of Noah. Well, that explains a lot because I was wondering why they couldn't. Your honkies. No, we were looking for Lamanites. No, no, they're looking for the priests of Noah. So, yeah, Ammon and the gang, they're honkies. And uh, so are the priests of Noah. And... The people of Lamahai. But the Lamanites, they are got a skin of blackness, I'm told. I'm told in this book. Several fucking times. <sighs> Just pointing that out. Therefore, cause that they should be taken and bound and cast into prison. And they had been 
wait, and had they been the priests of Noah, he would have caused that they should be put to death. He was going to man up there, finally. But when he found that they were not, <laughs> but that they had come from his brother and had come from the land of Zarahemla, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he was filled with exceeding joy. <laughs> and now King Limhi, see we're back we're back in present tense. Present past tense. As in, we're done with the flashback. And I don't even remember because this fucking flashback went on a little too long. <sighs> These guys should have read Robert McKee. <laughs> they would have learned how to tell a fucking story. I mean, it's almost all right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Great joy. There we go. And now King Limhi had sent pre had sent previous to the coming of Ammon a small number of men to search. We've heard all this shit before. All right, fine. To uh, for searching for the land of Zarahemla, but they could not find it. But and they were lost in the wilderness. Nevertheless, they did find a land that had been peopled. Yay, a land which was covered with dry bones. You know, I wanted to talk about that for a second. I didn't bring it up before because I think I might have been smashed. But, all right, fine. The Nephites, all right, fine, fine, they've got steel. Okay, fine. It's possible. It's, eh, e. But now the Jaredites have steel. I don't know how I didn't bring that up before, but. It just dawned on me. I mean, this it's not mentioned here, but earlier on in that video that I don't fucking remember which one it was, but if you've been following, you know. Or you don't remember either. <laughs> but um, they had steel swords that were pocked with rust, remember? The Jaredites that were sent to America right after the Tower of Babel which is Genesis, Bronze Age, Neolithic, probably. I don't think so. Nevertheless, they did find a land which was peopled with, with which had been peopled. Yea, a land which was covered with dry bones. Yea, I should do a yay drinking game. I could kill myself in one video. A land which had been peopled and which had been destroyed, like the end of this book, again and again. I know history repeats itself, but so does fiction. Wonder which one we're talking about, folks. You be the judge. And they, having supposed it to be the land of Sarah Himla, oh no! Return to the land of Nephi, having arrived in the borders of the land not many days before the coming of Ammon. So it's like, hey, we're going to give you these gold plates that you want. we want to read. But, and of course these other gold plates. Uh, but we have to finish writing of the parts where you're a participant. <laughs> and they brought a record with them, even a record of the people whose bones they had found. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm glad I put the cork on. <laughs> oh, shit. I got scotch all over my book. 
<laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was just so fucking funny for this a second ago. Uh, <laughs> the bones they had found, and it was engraved on ore. Now, I didn't bring this up before either, and it's been mentioned before. Uh, ore is a bunch of rocks with all kinds of different minerals in it. I'm not a geologist. We can ask Rhyme Maiden. I'm sure she knows. We can ask Nephi, Nephi, uh, Nephilim Free. And I'm sure he doesn't fucking know, but he'll he'll quote somebody who says something asinine, and we'll laugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. I think I might be drunk. Ore! Plates of ore? Come on. Fuck. You have to process it and turn it into fucking gold or whatever the fuck. Or, that's just rocks with a precious mineral in it. Plates made out of ore. And this has been mentioned before, but I haven't harped on it yet, so here it is. All right. And now, Limhi was again filled with joy. Oh, that's right, because Mosiah can translate. Because you've got these funny specks. I don't think they've mentioned them yet. All right. Filled with joy in learning from the mouth of Ammon. <laughs> that King Mosiah had the gift from God whereby he could interpret such engravings. Yay! And Ammon also did rejoice. We're all happy. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yet Edmund and his brethren were filled with sorrow because they, because so many of their brethren had been slain. And also King Noah and his priests had caused the people to commit so many sins and iniquities against God. And they also did mourn the death of Abinadi. I didn't, but they did. <laughs> and also for the departure of Alma, the guy who is doing that John the Baptist thing <laughs> with his own community. And I, we'll get back to them. I know, it's really hard to fucking follow this book. I'm just going to throw it out there, folks. You make of it what you will. Uh, the departure of Alma and the people that went with him, who had formed a church of God through the strength of the power of God. How do you know that? That's an isolated community. How do you, the people of Limhi, fucking know that to write that down? <laughs> Checkmate, biatch. All right. Uh, oh, they got me. Through the strength and power of God. I can't beat magic. Logic doesn't beat magic. That's like a fucking straight flush or whatever the fuck. I don't play poker much. But, you know, the hand that beats them all. Whatever it is. All right. Uh, Church of God, through the power of God and the faith on the words which had been spoken by Abinadi. That boring... Son of a bitch who couldn't die soon enough, in my opinion. Yay! They did more for... Whoops, wrong tense, sorry. Yay. They did mourn for their departure. <laughs> for they knew not whether they had fled. But they knew a bunch of shit they shouldn't have known. Now they would have gladly joined with them, for they themselves had entered into a covenant with God to serve him and keep his commandments and kiss his ass. And now, since the coming of Ammon, 
King Lema, uh, King Limhi had also entered into a covenant with God and also many of his people. Yeah. To serve him and keep his commandments. Who was speaking for him? It's nice to be the guy speaking for him. I think it was Jim Jones at one point, and then David Koresh, and, and the Reverend Son Yun Moon, and who else has been speaking for him lately? I don't keep track, because I, I, I'm a happy person. I don't dwell on shit like that most of the time. <laughs> All right, one more. I hope I can fucking finish this video. I think I might be a little drunk. What do you think, folks? Good enough? Uh, ouch, shit. Ow. <laughs> I was going to, they told me to take Motrin. I had some Motrin. I looked at the expiration date before I took, was going to take it. Expired in 2007. And I forgot to buy more. So. Thank you, Book of Mormon. <laughs> oh, okay. One more. Here it goes. And it came to pass that King Limhi and many of his people were desirous to be baptized. Because they needed a bath. <laughs> they needed to take a bath. Those stinky motherfuckers. Uh, and, but there was none in the land that had authority from God. And Ammon declined doing this thing. Because he he hated getting wet. <laughs> I don't mind. Never mind. Um, <laughs> and Emma declined doing this thing, considering himself an unworthy servant. And yet he's accomplished so much. Such low self-esteem. Therefore, they did not at that time form themselves into a church, uh, waiting upon the Spirit of the Lord. That's considerate of them and necessary. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, there it is. Now they were desirous to become even as Alma, who's got a whole fucking book that hasn't happened yet, and it's going to be wonderful. And his brethren, who had fled into the wilderness, they were desirous to be baptized as a witness and a testimony that they were willing to serve God with all their hearts. Nevertheless, they did prolong the time and an account of their baptism shall be given hereafter. Wait for it. Delayed gratification, folks. It's the best kind, honestly. There's nothing wrong with a little foreplay, a little slap and tickle, a little tease. I don't mind. You... <laughs> uh, and now all the study of Ammon and his people and King Limhi and his people was to deliver themselves out of the hands of the Lamanites. Lamanites. You know, that sounds like a great... Isn't, isn't that what they put on your kitchen floor? I'm just wondering. 
<laughs> then it's a Lamanites and from bondage. And I'm totally lost, but I'll see you in chapter fucking 22. I shouldn't have been drinking scotch this time, but couldn't resist, folks. Anyway, peace the fuck out. And have a great whatever the fuck it is.